Hey guys, uh, it's time for another uh, devlog and uh, today we're gonna talk about the uh, aspect of, well, I guess the aspect of outsourcing and what we've been doing for the past four months. Which coincidentally are the same thing. Yeah, much, surprise. Yeah. So, um, would you guys like to uh, sort of explain what's been going on with Dreamwoop for the past four months? Yeah. So basically, I guess the last big thing where we've been talking about has been working on Trans of Kalea, and then we stopped talking about that. Um, I guess what happened with that one was that we decided to put it uh, on ice for a bit to pivot. Like it's it's not cancelled or anything. We probably wanna or probably we do wanna get back to it. But based on, for example, reception from potential publishers and stuff like that, we figured that we might need to rethink the scope of it a bit. So, well, and the other thing is also that it, with that one, getting money in would have been quite far off still, even if we work, uh, kept working on it, and we kind of needed to get money coming in. So that's where the whole outsourcing uh, came in. We have this partner that we are working with who's been able to procure us some gigs so that's basically what we've been doing and I guess the reason we want to talk about this is because like at least for me like this is something that I might not have considered like and I think that would often be a thing when you like start an indie game company or whatever it's like you think you have to just crank your own games and, and not, not even you have to but you just kind of want to do that but maybe maybe sometimes a better idea is to take a break from your your own own stuff or put it into a back burner or only work on it with half team and then utilize the skills of the rest of the team to put, get money in, which is kind of what we're doing. And I guess if you sort of go this route, you can gain some bank that you can then use to make your own project even yeah. better. That, that and then also, as I said, like it doesn't mean that, for example, our whole team is working full time on on our own stuff like we still have a bunch of our own things going on progressing at various rates but the primary thing to focus on right now is to get cash in pretty much which like I mean you kind of need cash to pay rent, pay rent and, and buy food so <laughs> that's, that's and, and that's, a, that's a good point in a sense that uh, you know doing outsourcing is not uh, taking your status as an in, uh, independent developer or independent studio it's a uh, it's it's a part of uh, one way to provide your uh, expertise to other studios and make make profit on this uh, side and most mostly just you know get experience on yeah. uh, working on various projects and ev every project can al always teach you something new that you can always take into your uh, own IPs and I guess it gives you uh, this sort of like drive because like if you're by yourself you have to all the time motivate yourself but if you're working for somebody else then you know of course you get forced motivation from there but the good thing about doing it this way is that we are not committing to anything like forever like we're not gonna become like a port house under some big publisher or whatever we're doing stuff on a gig by gig basis which is something that is easy easy to miss as an opportunity because often you would think that okay well we are going to be making Kinect games forever now or whatever as, as certain people have or certain companies have had happened to them. But thankfully that certain company uh, I, I think that you were referring to now gets another chance to mm. shine with the so, so even, game. <laughs> so even that's not a end of the world situation but yeah because that's often a thing like I, I, and I guess maybe I'm talking a lot like from my, my own point of view because my own point of view was always like own ga only on games are bust and then when we were pro uh, like this opportunity pro was offered to us I started thinking like like you know no matter how, how skeptical I want to approach this like there is no like this just makes sense there's no loss here like if, if if the thing is that yeah we keep working on say chance of Kalia which may or may not get picked up by a publisher or you know we could get have get working on it full on indie, but like there's no guarantee that we could have finished it without outside resources or even if we had there's no guarantee it would have made money which would have meant that there might have never been a second game. Yeah. So it's been just four months now. We've had a few a few um, projects going on 
yeah, we got a chance to pitch for some pretty high profile IPs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And like, of course, the, one big thing about this type of stuff is, and I guess one reason I want to make this video is that, like, of course, a lot of stuff is, you know, you can, are not allowed to talk about. Mm -hmm. So we had to figure out what we, can we talk about, because we can talk about the fact that this is something you can do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we are doing. But yeah, like, and it's quite fascinating to see that when you sort of open yourself to something like this, as a studio with like our our history so to speak like we shipped one game that was like relatively well received or, or indeed very well well received and that was enough to then get us all these opportunities when we sort of open up to it mm -hmm. but that's not gonna happen if you're just gonna stick to your guns and like no you know don't even try to go for it yeah and and also one that it's been a time some some time now that we have been uh, uh, posting anything uh, and one one reason has been that you know when other people go for summer vacations yeah. and such that has not been so much of a case on our side well we, we have been having summer vacations as well but for game development summer time is also the time when a lot of these negotiations are made a lot of outsourcing are sought out and a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities are during summertime, so that has been keeping us busy, and and something something new and great potential will be there on on our side to get some some outsourcing work and get some experience working with uh, established uh, industry partners, um, and well, it all started kind of you know E3 was in the early early summer, Gamescom is only a few way, weeks away. And uh, all, all of that has been kind of the some pushing factors for the uh, for the game industry to really go into these talks of uh, development at the point. Yeah, and like you said, uh, there's a chance to gain some experience and of course get some get some cash in the bank. But also, you, you this uh, it's another way of getting getting the um, company visibility with the big players, like for example, like he said, in E3 or Gamescom, and uh, with these smaller projects like outsourcing, we get uh, good, good relations yeah, with, with other companies. Which so. will then offer further uh, like possibilities later on down the line and stuff like that. Like, I guess that's also one thing worth talking about is that, of course, a lot of this that we're talking about here doesn't apply to all indies, because I guess maybe the usual idea of what indies is like two guys or whatever, mm -hmm doing stuff on the side or you know doing stuff in their own home stuff like that like then of course you can do stuff like just work on something for four years or five years on the side but yeah. because we are kind of weird indies in the sense that we do this professionally and we have like a team of you know 10 -ish people then you can't really do that you can just sit on your even though like sometimes i, I think i would love you know I, I think i would love to do it do it you know i would love to just sit on and work on, on our own thing without having to consider you know money or anything but you can't do that like when this is your basically full-time job mm. and, and also of course it's not limited into the amount of people that you have in your mm. company uh, for example uh, if you look at another Finnish company the, uh, the studio that made Lucius games uh, they're a three-man company they made quite quite uh, impressive uh, feat compared to the size I mean yeah, teams like that can most likely do a lot of uh, outsourcing between their own titles mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, kind of like provide stuff from there. I have no idea if they've done any outsourcing or anything, but I just I was uh, just a few days ago sending emails with one of their developers, and I was looking like like kind of like the backlog and what they've been doing, and and noticed that there's only like three guys, and I was. Uh, Kind of the fact that with the outsourcing and all that is like co-development is is something that I, I think is uh, something that indie scene might be needing in in terms of going forward to be able to get over this fact that in indie game boom is is going down. I mean the trend uh, had its uh, most f the fresh peak is it, gone. Now we need to have more st kind of like a stabilize the indie scene more and mm -hmm. yeah. co-development and uh, doing uh, outsourcing on the side is, is something that could help a lot of indies. And I think especially in regards to the peak being gone, I think especially the peak of like 
these sort of magic games that kind of come out of the blue or are, are worked on with very low budget or whatever and then they become to become massive smash hits like i think that sort of was passed like now the bar has been raised i mean it's, it's unfair to say because of course those those games might have or probably would have you know gotten over even a much raised bar but still like it's getting to a point where it would would make sense to collaborate so that you can create bigger things and so that you can create stuff more efficiently. Yeah. Of course, there's always going to be room for these hobbies in the scene where these gems can then emerge from. But like the more sort of commercial in this in this scene that uh, emerged from, you know, well this boom basically. Yeah. Now this this scene has to figure out. Okay, well it's obviously a profession now. It's obviously commercial now. So how how does it work from a business point of view? Yeah, uh, and also any any indie developers watching, if you, if you want, if you have a commercial uh, future in, in front uh, in front of you or in your dreams with your with your games, you have to understand one one fact that uh, the market is getting crowded, like really uh, in a in a really high uh, manner, and the amount of games is on, only gonna get bigger. So. The amount of uh, small studios there is always the chance of getting uh, noticed getting smaller all the time yeah it's yeah that, that's the thing like the discoverability and of course like i mean that's been an issue in the in the past too and now for example steam i guess is you know valve is tackling it on the pieces and stuff like that but it's still no matter what what is done it's still gonna be a thing and like i guess it's the whole previously it might have been enough if you did a uh, you know there, there, there were so many niches where you could go into and just make a, you know, good game and like you, you wouldn't need to go, you know, any ridiculous lengths into it, just put passion and love into it and make it and there was a relatively acceptable chance of it being a success. But now we're getting to a point where those niches are getting rarer and rarer and you have to do more. So it gets to a point where you cannot necessarily do that stuff anymore with a three-man studio or, or a smaller studio, you might need more people. So then maybe one option would be then to some sort of, do some sort of collaboration, some sort of co-development. Yeah. Because when, when there are when there are more people involved, when there are more studios involved, it's always that you have more resources and you have more potential, you have more uh, more existing fans, you have more, kind of like a, you have more potential on that. But uh, of course, this is not saying if you want to uh, solo develop, go ahead solo develop. But for those who might have been having uh, feelings that uh, solo developing is too much for them and they are not getting the visibility but they believe in their ideas uh, seek out other yeah. other studios that believe in your idea and uh, try to try if uh, co-developing is a thing for you or if you believe in your idea but you don't have uh, resources to pull it out you know you can always look into outsourcing you know. To get get money in and then work on your dream thing. Because yeah. I remember, like when we started with with Wasara way back in the day, uh, one thing we talked about is that, or I always thought about was that my first game is not gonna be my dream game. My second game is not gonna be my dream game. How it, it's possible that in a professional capacity I will never make my dream game. And I think that's one thing you have to realize when you get into game development as as a profession is that like. You, in general, if you get into something as a profession, that you might never be able to then do your dream thing. It's like, for me, for example, one thing I like to do as a hobby is I like to make music, and then I can do whatever I want, but and you know, do make my dream songs or whatever. In so far as I'm capable to do so. But if it was my profession, then I might never have the time or the drive to do that. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, you don't have to approach things in that way because and I'm kind of, I guess, talking to younger myself here because <laughs> these are these are things I talked about, uh, thought about a lot. It's like, because you can always find specific things. Making a game is so amazing in that there's so many little things that need to be done. And in any single game, no matter what you're making, you can find certain things that can be your dream you, you can you can put yourself in, like inject yourself in there you know get get that creative passion put put into it uh, especially if it's like in the side I, I think maybe if, if it's like triple a and you have like a super you know streamlined pipeline and, and stuff like that then maybe it can get to a point where you're just doing like conveyor belt work but I don't think that's even case 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 there so I think that's sort of like the the attitude thing like so if, if you really want to make a game like uh, as an indie you kind of have to 
figure out whether you want to make it professionally as a professional, whether you want to make it as a hobby. And of course, like both are viable approaches, but I think it's very important as early on as possible to ask yourself, which one do you want to do? And if it's the profession one, you don't want to have another job, you want to do game dev, then you have to figure out, okay, how is my game dev gonna let me live? But if it's the other one, then, you know, do whatever you want, go wild. And I think I admire people who can do that, in a sense, and I think there's a lot of value there, but that's not what I want to do. I, I want to focus on this 100%, which means I have to sacrifice certain things, but also means that I gain a lot in other things. But I guess we've been going on for 15 minutes, so I guess you had to edit this once again. No, it's, that's not the one. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's 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 it for this time. Um, um, so yeah, now you know what what's been going on. So to kind of wrap up, uh, challenges of Korea is at the moment. Uh, Frozen, but not forgotten. No, yeah. It's, it's not, up again. It's gonna be like Captain America type of thing. Like it kind of, <laughs> it kind of crashed into the ocean. It's frozen in like a chunk, chunk of ice, <laughs> and then they will dig it up, or you know, fish it up at some point, or we will fish it up at some point. It, it will be very confused about what the year it is yes, and stuff like. Probably. Um, yeah, challenges of Korea might be a thing that we might uh, dive into more in maybe a future episode of, of Devlog, but. At the moment, yeah, you know what's what's been going on. So and and, and the um, the fact that we've been doing some uh, outsourcing and uh, collaboration with other other people. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this time. So um, thanks for watching, and we'll see, see you, you next time. time.